I'm going to show you how to make pewter objects at home. The supply list is pretty simple, but you have to make sure you're using lead-free, non-rosin core solder, because that's actually the same as pewter. So here I have a lump of modeling clay with a jump ring in it. I'll show you jump rings next. And what I'm doing now is I'm just constructing a clay shape. I'm making sure that all the parts have really good contact and overlap. and are nice and thick. They can't be too thin because there's going to be metal poured into the holes left behind from these. So we want it to be thicker um, than desired if possible to leave a little extra leeway for when pouring the metal. Now in the clay I can embed things that I want to have in the final metal piece. Um, if you look online at precious metal clay websites, PMC websites, they'll give you lists of what you can put at high temperature and won't crack or break. I have no idea what these beads are going to do. Um, but certain kinds of semi-precious stones or crystals, or even things like hunks of copper ore, um, won't melt at these temperatures or crack. So now I'm going to pour some plaster. So I have taken a ball of clay and I'm rolling it into a log, then I press the log into a rough rectangle. This is going to become a dam to hold in plaster. It doesn't have to be very tall because I don't want thick plaster. I want to easily be able to break the plaster off of my finished piece. What it does have to be is tightly sealed to the foil, wax paper, your mom's favorite wooden table, whatever you know, you're using as your base. Okay, awesome. So as promised, jump rings, I have a Q-tip. I have some wire. Not solder, wire, things that won't melt under hot temperature. I'm now wrapping it around the Q-tip to make a coil. So then I slide it off the Q-tip. So I've got a little coil here, so I'm going to bring in my wire snippers and snip away. And as I snip, I leave behind beautiful little rings with just the right space in the gap to slip them onto each other. So this is one mini bathroom Dixie cup plaster of Paris. I found that that's usually the right amount for these molds. Now I'm going to add roughly one quarter bathroom Dixie cup of really hot water. I mean really hot, nice steamy out of the tap water, not boiling. Oh, hi Q-tip, nice to see you again. So mixing that in, the key with mixing plaster is to work out the lumps. There are going to be lumps. Now you can mix thoroughly or you can be like me and just get in there and even though you said you weren't going to get plastered tonight, get plastered. By the way, if you're 14 and you ever get someone pressuring you to get plastered at a party, bring a bag of this stuff. Throw it on everyone. You'll never be invited back and not have to deal with peer pressure again in that kind of situation. So now I've got a nice thick plaster. It's pourable, like you can see how well it's mixing, but it's very thick. It's almost like um, like gogurt, you know, those uh, yogurt and two were cultured milk. So I'm now going to pour that. Because it's hot water, the chemical reaction will occur quickly, so I have to move quickly. But why aren't I pouring quickly? Golly gee, that's because I don't want to trap air bubbles along my shape. I'm pouring slowly, letting the plaster fill all the little cracks and all the little bubbles. And then I'm not making it really, really thick. Notice I'm choosing not to go to the top. I want to easily be able to crack this plaster off my final mold with a hammer or even my bare hands. So now, I'm just going to tap to bring the air bubbles from the surface of my piece to the surface of the plaster. Alright, that ought to do it. So now I'm going to let this cure. See this? Do not dump it down the sink. Let it harden. Throw it away. 
crush it into powder, mix it into your compost. Do not put it down the sink. Plaster hardens in the presence of water. So, <laughs> thank you for the emphasis, Ben. So this will um, clog plumbing and cause horrible, horrible things to happen. I've waited until the mold is now cool to the touch. First it formed a layer of water on the top, then it became sort of gritty soft and warm, and now it's cool. So what I'm going to do is just gently peel away the clay. Now if I leave this mold out overnight, it'll become very solid and very hard. Right now it's still a little bit weak, as you can see by when I rub the side it breaks off. Let's zoom in on that. So you can see how as I go, the edge just breaks into powder. So this is still a very weak and delicate mold, and I have to handle it that way. Hooray! So on to the next step. We need to remove the clay from the mold. Now I've got some embedments in here, so I'm being very careful not to peel them out with the clay. If you have molded with wax, you can set it on fire at this point and burn it out. Uh, if you want to burn it out, you would hold it like that, lighter under it, and melt and burn it out. Obviously you would do that in a safe place for use of fire and if you are a youthful child under the watchful gaze of your legal guardian. Um, okay, so I'm just going to gently peel as much out as I can. The rest of it will pop out um, after it's dried. So I'm going to peel this out and then stick the mold in the oven. I'll explain. My mold is clean. It's ready to go, right? No! If I pour metal into this now, it will kill me. How will it kill me? There is still water inside this. It will come out as steam popping the metal into the air in a horrible blast. So what am I going to do? I'm going to broil it for about 20 minutes. Have fun in there. Our mold is now nice and bone dry, but regardless, always wear safety glasses, Mr. Cameraman. Because I know I'm wearing mine. Alright. So I'm going to melt lead-free solder, which is essentially the same as many um... Ooh, this is kind of fun. Which is essentially the same as many pewters into the mold. And as I do so, I'm keeping the soldering iron tip in the metal to keep it molten and heated. Now, you can imagine there's not a lot of heat here. Now, this is not the same as a furnace, so I can only do small charms like this. The, something the size of this is already pushing it. Like you could hear that crack just then from the uh, mold and the beads inside it. So, is this a perfect method? Hell no. Will it get you some cute little trinkets and stuff? Definitely. Is it prop worthy, especially for theater? Uh huh. So we'll um, we'll come back to this in a minute. Okay. Oh, and one note. Well, it's still molten. You might want to just like before tap it to get the bubbles out. You can. See, I don't know if you can see on camera, but right there, a bubble just came out while I was shaking it. Um, and I can reapply heat and smooth that puppy back out. Again, imperfect process. Okay. Make sure that my jump ring is adequately covered. And there we go! Hooray! And so here's the pendant just pulled out of the mold. I was kind of hoping for some gratuitous like hammer smashing action, but the smooth shape popped right out once the metal cooled, because as it cools it contracts and, well, in this case popped out. Now beads, not the best idea for embedments. They will probably come off if one were to wear the pendant and shake it around. Um, this tarnished color can be polished away or it can be chemically altered with a patina. Uh, and so if you are careful, you can do some really nice and detailed um, castings this way. Let me show you. This is a butterfly I made yesterday, and as you can see, it's got a lot nicer detail because I 
made it smaller so the metal was evenly heated and melted into all the small parts of the mold. And instead of embedding um, glass, I embedded wire to make antenna. And that had to be cracked out of the mold and hammered out. And so, again, you can do some really nice, fine, pretty little details if um, you take the time to do it well, which I didn't do for that demo. Alas, poor Q-tip! I knew him, small bathroom-sized Dixie cup! A fellow of infinite jest, a most excellent fancy! I have borne him in my ears a thousand times, and now how abhorred in my imagination it is! My gorge rims at it! Here hung those lips that I have kissed I know not how oft! Where be your swabs now? Your paper stick! Your th